Here's our next example. We're going to use completing the square, again, just to emphasize a point, and knowing all the different methods of solving quadratic equations, you'll make your own choices about what method you prefer. And actually, I have met a guy who his preferred method was completing the square, so it can happen. And if, if you're out there preferring completing the square, excellent. Now, completing the square, we definitely are paying attention to another aspect of this problem that's different from our previous examples and different from those examples where we worked to complete the square. What is different is that we don't start with x squared. We have a 2x squared. And yeah, there are some other parts that are different, but I really want to point out that we have a coefficient on x squared that is greater than 1. And that is a critical thing to notice if we're going to complete the square. But let's first talk about getting set up. I'd like to have a space here where I'm going to throw in that third term to uh, make a perfect square trinomial, where there's an 8 there right now, and I know the positive 8 is not what I want. I'm just going to clear it out of there. Let's get it out of both sides. Get it out of the left side, move it over to the right side, I should say. I'm already thinking about the next step, and that's no good. Good example to just take time. Take your time, be cautious about all these moves. So this is the setup I like when I'm about to complete the square. I have the x squared and then the regular x in a space for my third term. But the problem is we have a coefficient on x squared that's greater than 1. And you never complete the square with a coefficient of x squared that's greater than 1. So I see a 2, 3, 4, any, anything else. Not time to complete the square. But when we have an equation, we can just say, oh, well, i got to get rid of that 2. Let's divide by 2. You've got to do it to everything. Do it to both sides of the equation. And to divide these two terms, this entire side by 2, is the same thing as individually divide them by 2. So there's the cancel. There's our x squared. So we're in better shape now to complete the square. Never forget that right side. x squared plus 10x. All right. So now we can complete the square. Okay? So the 2 made it not possible to complete the square. Once we have x squared, now we complete the square. <clears throat> what number do we need? There's our positive 10. We cut it in half and get 5. 5 squared. It's a 25 that we need. So let's write this left side as the perfect square that it is now. It's x plus 5 squared equals 49. Pretty decent. We're ready to do square root on both sides. Square root of 49, positive or negative, 7. And that's the square root and square cancel, x plus 5. Let's finish it up by splitting it up into two equations. x plus 5 equals positive 7. x plus 5 equals negative 7. Two linear equations to solve. Take away 5, both sides. x equals 2. First answer. And this other equation, take away 5, x equals negative 12. Two solutions, x equals 2, x equals negative 12. What we want to know now is about completing the square. We don't do it with a coefficient on x squared that's greater than 1. If that happens, we need to divide that coefficient out of everything. Now we have x squared. Now you can complete the square. And completing the square, it ends with doing square root property. Never forget the add, subtract. Before we move on to the other methods, let's do a quick recap of what we have so far. We have solved by factoring. When we did solve by factoring, it needed to be in standard form with all of our terms on one side equal to zero. And we would factor what we had here. And then we did this sort of split and solve. Then we looked at that you could solve by taking square roots.
What we had to do here was have our squared part isolated. That was a good setup to do square root on both sides. Let's throw in what we did. We would do square root, square root, and you know you've got a positive or negative in there. Let's do a couple of examples uh, of using these two methods. I really have one main motivation for doing a few more examples right now. It's because the solutions that we've come up with so far have been all rational numbers, just integers, and we had a couple fractions in there, and that's really not the reality. We come up with some funky-looking irrational numbers. So we need to do some examples to see how that happens. Let's go with... Um, well, before we get to the funky stuff, let's do a few factoring examples that are pretty common, actually. x squared minus 5x equals 0. You might see, well, there's the x squared and there's the x term. I could think about completing the square. True. Our, our different methods will all work. Um, I'm thinking about cutting that in half and seeing a 5 over 2, and I need to put a 25 over 4 on both sides, and not really so interested. Solve by factoring, if we can do it, is pretty standard, the, the quickest, smoothest way to go. And I'm emphasizing about factoring this. What about how do we factor those two terms? I'm starting to give away the answer there. Not really, just it's just an x, but how about that? Always, when it comes to factoring, we're thinking GCF first. So both of these terms have an x. I can divide out, bring it outside of parentheses, and I'm left with x minus 5 inside the parentheses. So this is really sol another solve by factoring problem. It wasn't a trinomial where we had two sets of parentheses or a, a difference of squares binomial where we had two sets of parentheses. It was a GCF, but we still can use that zero product rule. We do have two parts multiplied together to equal zero. Those two parts are, we're used to spotting the one part is where we have the set of parentheses. Is, is, the, is it the x minus 5 equals zero? That x by itself, that's the other part. Maybe x equals zero. That's an absolute must if we're looking for solutions. x equals zero absolutely is one of the solutions. I see it if I think about solve by factoring and, and see a GCF. And then when I split it up, there's my x equals zero solution. Here's the other one. Solve this linear equation, x equals positive 5. They both check out. If we throw a 0 in place of x, 0 squared minus 5 times 0, and 0 minus 0 is 0. And that might not seem like much, and it doesn't sound like much. Lots of zeros, but hey, it was a number. We put it in place of x, and it made our equation true. And that's all we ask for when it comes to solutions. So 0 minus 0 equals 0. That's true. That is true. x equals 0 is it's, an, it's a solution. We cannot ignore it. x equals 5, the other solution. 5 squared is 25. 25 minus 25 equals 0. So we're still seeing our two solutions.